Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to our session on reworking the network upgrade pipeline. I'm Stephen Smith of the Electric Corn Company. And I'm Deirdre from the Zcash Foundation. If you didn't see me last session, I'm here again. All right, we'll get going. So we've got a pretty interesting agenda today. Uh, we're going to cover several things. Uh, one is introduce the network upgrade pipeline, just in case there are people that might not be familiar with it. We'll talk about the rationale, why it exists. Uh, why we have it, uh, the historical background, kind of how it's evolved over time. Um, and then we'll move into, well, you know, why make changes at this point or, or what kind of changes are we thinking about? We'll talk about the pipeline beyond NU5, which is our next network upgrade coming up uh, in the October timeframe. And then we'll have a period at the end just for kind of open questions and discussions. And of course, we'll take questions from, uh, from Discord as well at that time. So what is the network upgrade pipeline? Um, you know, the short version is, is the process we use to shape, safely ship new uh, protocol upgrades in Zcash. Uh, it's also commonly known as the NUP. So if you've heard people refer to the NUP and you always kind of wondered what that stood for, or what that acronym meant, it's the Network Upgrade Pipeline. So what's the rationale for the NUP? Um, so the goal in creating the NUP was multifaceted. One, it was to introduce synchronization points for protocol developers outside of ECC. Um, at two, to ensure that future network upgrades continue to meet the historic standards we have for safety and quality. And third, and arguably as important as the others, is to allow plenty of time for ecosystem partner testing and integration. So the background, yeah, the ECC introduced version 1.0 of the NUP in December of 2018. Um, as I mentioned, the intent was twofold, um, to support the development of multiple subsequent upgrades. So typically the planning for one network upgrade overlaps with the kind of the finalization of the prior network upgrade, which is kind of where the term pipeline comes from. Um, and it's to bring consensus features from the speculative or idea realm down into you know, actual production and productionize those ideas. So the NUP introduced the concept of coordination points, um, which signify they're kind of like milestones, if you will, that must be fulfilled for a given feature set to ship on time. And again, safety and quality underlines everything about the, the NUP. So this is version 1.0 uh, of the NUP. Um, probably hard to read all the type on here, all the print, small print, but essentially just know it was a it was a pretty long, rigid. Uh, somewhat rigid um, pipeline with, uh, in some cases, some of the time periods on here, you probably, again, can't read it, but the time periods um, noted by the bars were probably a little longer than they needed to be. Um, and again, a little too rigid. So we undertook some efforts to improve that over time, which gets into kind of how it's evolved. Um, so we published version 1.1 in May 2019, uh, which reflected uh, a little bit of an update and laid out the anticipated timelines for NU3 and NU4 at that point. Um, so during the process of all these network upgrades and the launch of Zcash, we learned a lot about the NUP that could be improved upon with Blossom, Heartwood, and Canopy, which was last in November. Um, and we also explored ways to improve the NUP through, uh, through two community calls. One was a Zcash Foundation protocol hangout, and one we dedicated an Arborous call uh, to those. We'll talk a little bit more about Arborous calls um, toward the end, but they're essentially like a, a protocol focused development call. So in February 2021, we kind of took all that uh, feedback and we published a more agile version of the NUP. Uh, we called NUP 2.0. And at that time, we also laid out our proposed schedule for NU5, um, which looks something like that. So it's uh, one, the diagram is a lot simpler um, just because primarily because I did it and I'm not a graphics person. Um, but, but it's essentially the same primary coordination points, just with a little bit more agile uh, flex to it. So Deirdre, do you want to talk about um, yes. why we're thinking about making changes now? Yes. So uh, as Steve was describing, the original NUP was designed and uh, optimized for um, basically one protocol team, the ECC, um, who would be deploying most of the consensus rules, uh, one coming up with the consensus rules and implementing them, and then kind of disseminating them to the rest of the community 
that would need to integrate via wallets or uh, need to implement other zips um, that got deployed with Zcash. Um, now there's going to be at least one other implementation, full verification implementation of the, of the protocol. That would be ZebraD. Um, once you've got more than one team that is trying to be on the same page with consensus rules and implementations, um, the, the kind of not waterfall, but at least serial implementation uh, workflow that the original NUP assumed um, doesn't quite work for all the teams, or at least it doesn't work as well as it could. Um, so we're trying to look at the NUP that we have and see if we can um, make it better for more than one consensus node implementation, but also so that we can make it better for any one uh, consensus node implementation. For example, um, if you caught the last, uh, the last talk where we talked a little bit about unified addresses coming out of the work on Orchard that's coming out soon. Um, the, the realization of the UX problems uh, of introducing yet a fourth uh, Zcash transaction type uh, into the ecosystem, um, the, re the, the realization of that problem and the, uh, the fix for that came out of a design sprint that the electric coin company ran um, kind of late in the NUP cycle for NU5. Um, we, the community realized that this was obviously a win for the community to have a unified address when, when we introduced Orchard versus yet a fourth address that you had to juggle. So we did not want to leave that to the next network upgrade. Um, but it would have been so much easier to plan and organize the work that both teams had to do um, and prioritize you know, the order of operations of what needed to get done when, um, if we had this realization much earlier in the NUP cycle. So one of the things that we're thinking of addressing with like a modified NUP is that design sprints or other things like that become a first class citizen in the NUP process in the pipeline itself as part of a planning cycle um, so that they can be upfront at the top as opposed to a late realization that you realize, oh, we really need this in, it shouldn't wait, but then it, it causes you to juggle your schedule and your plans. Um, can we go to the next slide? Awesome. Um, part of that sort of design work is also uh, design and planning work is when you make a change to the consensus protocol, it can may have downstream effects and other places in the protocol. Zcash is a quite a complex system. The protocol itself involves the shielded aspects, the non-shielded aspects of transactions, of blocks, of doing these consensus rules, but also about network, peer-to-peer -peer messaging protocols, about how these pieces are communicated amongst peers. Um, and lots of pieces of intersecting uh, dynamic parts of the protocol that affect each other when they change because we need to preserve consensus. We do not want any uh, accidental side forks. Um, so trying to plan the uh, most optimized way for not just one implementation of the protocol, but more than one implementation of the protocol to step out onto the next network upgrade at about the same time with about the same agreement um, can be complicated, even if it's just one person in one team, um, having more than one team uh, trying to maintain consensus, uh, it gets a bit harder. So one of the things that we want to try to address uh, coming soon is see if there's like a community way that we can figure out the dependency graph of if we wanna make a change, maybe not Orchard, but maybe something like non-malleable transaction IDs, because that can be an independent of the whole Orchard deployment. Um, if we make this change, what other changes does it depend on, do, do, do its dependents uh, need to undergo uh, in order to do that? And having that sort of information for the protocol and not just for um, any one implementation and code 
um, will help anyone who's implementing Zcash uh, plan how these changes need to get uh, rolled out, both in their code base and if they have a plan for, oh, this might take us a lot longer because of how our code is structured, they can communicate that with the rest of the community and say, given everything else that we're trying to do, this might take us a lot longer to get to testnet or get to mainnet than someone else would. And then the community can decide, well, it's like, okay, do we want this to be a, a requirement or does do we want to make this a an opt-in or does this have to be, we all hold hands and jump together. Therefore we might need to wait another network upgrade cycle to make sure we can all get it out on time. Having the information about that dependency graph about the protocol and the protocol includes the peer-to-peer -peer network protocol, um, enough information about serialization and storage um, to make the Zcash protocol work uh, in a implementation agnostic way uh, will really help with that. And this is very top of the funnel sort of stuff for project planning. Um, one other part that goes into that is instead of having um, instead of having a hard activation date for say testnet or for mainnet, um, moving to the concept of an activation window to help with planning and also to allow a little bit of jitter, a little bit of like fuzz factor. So it's not just like we are deploying on July 1st or we are deploying on October 1st and like, if something happens, what do you do? Like, you, you know, putting into cram mode for a, not an obvious reason, allowing some flexibility around planned activations until the height, the actual block height is set of when the new consensus rules will go into effect will allow us to be flexible enough and responsive enough to un unforeseen changes like unified addresses or we had non-malleable transaction IDs and we realized, oh, we have to change message types as well. Having enough flexibility and adaptability in the schedule for our network upgrades to respond in an agile manner to that sort of stuff uh, and have that in the plan up front as opposed to being like, well, we were supposed to activate on first, but this happened. So we're just gonna push it back and push it back. Like if we have a, a, a window to work in instead of a hard fixed date, um, that will be allow us to be more flexible and more agile uh, as the multi-party implementation of consensus rules uh, starts happening. Um, and then how we pick those activation windows uh, should be based on the feature set, the, the zips that we're actually choosing to go into a network upgrade based as much as possible on a historical level of effort, not a, oh yeah, we think this will be fine <laughs> or this will be really easy. Um, for example, uh, the canopy upgrade is a different order of work to the orchard upgrade, uh, the, the NU5 upgrade, which includes a whole new shielded pool uh, orchard. So, we don't necessarily have to pick every network upgrade to be six months after the last one, or we don't need to have an activation window that is like, I don't know, a few weeks. If we have a big level of uncertainty or a, big, a known level of difficulty based on what we've deployed before, we can move the, the numbers and twist the dials on when the activation window is, how long it is, or how narrow it is. If we have a network upgrade coming up soon and like the things that are slotted for it are like, we've done things like this before. We have high confidence that this will not have a lot of variability. And we have, we have high confidence that uh, problems do not tend to show up late in the game. We can be more precise about the activation window that we choose. And we can be more precise about where we slot that activation window, how far out, stuff like that. Uh, next slide, thank you. So you, you kind of might get the, the impression that like these are sort of things that we want to pursue, but they're not concrete, they're not hard concrete uh, things that we're going to do, uh, like having a, a NUP 3.0 thing uh, um, up on a slide. So 
we definitely want to work with our protocol dev community and our integrators who are influenced by how this uh how the protocol evolves how the teams who are working on it work uh because how they work impacts how you work so we would like to focus uh the things that we're evolving and up with to the top of the funnel as i said kind of earlier um once we've kind of picked what we're putting into the network upgrade and get cranking on it uh, all together. Like the rest of the slide that Steven was showing uh, is pretty good. It's basically, you've got to get your specs and your zip done with enough time to get the specs and the zips audited by a, you know, a security of a reviewer. Um, and then you've got to have the implementation done by a certain point. So the implementation can be audited um, by a third party reviewer. All of that, and then a testnet activation with the windows I just talked about and the mainnet activation. All of that is pretty solid and we all agree that that works pretty well. It's the top of the funnel that we're trying to optimize a little bit more for multiple parties and with a, as good planning as we can try to get, especially when we have all these interdependencies on both pieces of the protocol, but also pieces of software. For example, um, the Bellman library and the Halo 2 library that uh, Sean and Dara have done a lot of work on, um, Zebra D depends directly on that library. Um, we have no strong need to re-implement Groth 16 and the Sapling circuit or Halo 2 and the Orchard circuit from scratch. Um, there's like a security debate about how, you know, the usefulness of a completely independent uh, uh, cryptography implementation of a consensus critical primitive um, versus having all, all your eggs in one basket and guarding the hell out of that basket, um, especially because this is the only one that's been done for Halo 2. This is the only instance of the, uh, of the Orchard Circuit. And then, you know, balancing where you want to allocate your uh, your resources in terms of engineering effort and expertise. Um, we have implemented a ton of stuff for Sapling and Orchard that Zebra will needs to take advantage of our scalability and parallelization and async architecture. So we've implemented a bunch of that cryptography over here. Um, but there's still interdependence on a lot of pieces of software that does require coordination and a different DAG of basically, ah, to implement this part of the network upgrade, we need this piece of code and we need them to update this piece of code and they use our piece of code. So they, you know, they depend on us. All of that is part of the top of the funnel planning uh, that we're trying to, trying to do better on basically. Um, Part of the top of the funnel is uh, how should we get feedback from the community about how features should be included or removed? Because the NUP is not so much a, a, a governance process. It is very much a, this is how we ship changes process. This is how we execute and deliver the consensus changes or the protocol level changes. Um, in these different node implementations or uh, interoperable implementations. But in terms of what should we prioritize, that is not described by the NUP. Um, and we might want to solicit more information about if anyone wants to help guide that a little bit more. And I would invite you to come to the Arborist call where we talk about this sort of stuff all the time. Um, another part that we want to discuss and, and address is what counts as an active protocol implementation or an active protocol team? Because you know you might have a good fork of Zcash and maybe they're involved, but maybe they're not. But if you make a change and they aren't kind of picking it up, like, are you gonna break them? So we have to kind of evaluate that about who are the parties that are blockers uh, when we're trying to do this dependency planning process um, and who is sort of around but is not considered a blocker or you know if we break them, we'll be very sad. Um, 
And then uh, how important is consensus node interoperability for a feature to the community? For example, a lot of net, we've had a lot of ideas for changes to the network peer-to-peer -peer protocol, the message protocol that may not be, um, that may not be consensus critical in terms of we can support it. And if another node doesn't support it, nothing happens to the chain. It won't fork or anything like that. It's an optional feature, but there might be other things about, oh, Zcash D has worked a certain way for a long time. It might've inherited a certain network behavior from Bitcoin. And is that the way we should do it? Or is it the way we've just always done it? And how do we decide what we want to do versus what we do? And how important is it to distinguish that? These are some of the questions that we're sort of wrestling with that affect how we plan and affect the not. Um, next slide. Yes, so go ahead. <laughs> no, I was just gonna say that's the, the Arbor's call we've mentioned a couple of times. We have those every two weeks on Thursdays at 22.30 UTC, I believe is the current time. Um, but that's, it's just protocol development discussion. So we talk about basically everything on this call um, today, like what goes into an upgrade, the R&D, you know, what we're researching, what's in development, schedules, um, you know, blockers, issues, anything that might come up. So if you're interested, you know, in protocol development, we'd encourage you to join us for those calls. Um, they're pretty phenomenal. And um, just to kind of reiterate a couple of things Deirdre said, that when you kind of drop into the pipeline, it's kind of like you're in familiar territory, right? So you've got the, if it really feels good, you've got your audit schedule and your implement, your spec audit, your implementation audit, your test net period. So everything feels like natural and, and smooth. And as she said, the top of the funnel or the ideas phase, like what is, you know, what pre, what, kind of what predates the current pipeline is what we're, we're hoping to really enhance and improve and make it a little smoother. So we don't just get to feature selection and go, what would, what would we like to do in this upgrade? But we've had, you know, kind of months to think and talk about it and socialize it. Anyway, um, I believe that's it in terms of slides. Uh, there's our contact info. I'm probably going to just stop sharing now. And um, I believe there may be a question in the chat, but it'll probably be easier to see if I do that. So um, let's see. We've got a couple of questions. Um, question from Discord. What does your testing infrastructure look like? Do you perform stress testing on testnet mainnet? Um, Deirdre, you want to? answer that from a zebra d perspective i can kind of answer from uh, zcash d side as well from zebra d we currently we currently don't do any official stress testing on any and on a open testnet or mainnet um, a lot of the testing we do is literally spinning up a new node every time that we make a change to main and seeing how fast it syncs um, we we've done a little um, uh, accidental stress testing of Zcash D by initially deploying zebras that could make as many possible uh, parallel connections as they could to peers on the network. And apparently Zcash D doesn't like this. If you ask to give, if you ask to connect to too many of them too often, uh, it, it, it does not expect you to do that and it might behave poorly. So we've, we've, accidentally stress tested, uh, uh, I think they might've been mainnet. Um, and now we bring that down to, to be more in line. I think it's the cap is at 50 parallel connections to peers on the network. Um, a lot of our stress testing is shoving a ton of data through Zebra D, uh, including test vectors, but also um, property testing, like every single data structure, every single message type that we have and, and seeing where it will break on approximately random data. Um, but upcoming, once we, I think basically once we're on testnet um, and we are uh, confident in our interoperability and good behavior, not just interoperability, but like good behavior with other Zcash Gs on the network, um, see, see the above too many connections issue. Just because you can doesn't mean you should uh, sort of deal. Um, right. We're probably gonna try to stress stress test Zebra um, 
but it's hard to it's hard to say what that would actually look like. We are more concerned about kind of stuff what I just said before, which is basically we don't want to overwhelm other nodes on the network. Um, we want to make sure that if we're flooding the network with connections and requests and data, that we don't uh, make other people fall over. Um, so I would say we're we are looking forward to that sort of testing on testnet, maybe testnet in the box, but we probably won't have that for any five. We really want to do that for an upcoming network upgrade. Um, we're trying to, we really want to test that sort of stuff in that direction. So on the uh, Zcash D side, we definitely don't stress test on mainnet um, because that would cost actual ZEC as opposed to TAS. Um, but we do have a pretty substantial testing infrastructure, a number of tests that we run um, with every, uh, really with every build. So every uh, release candidate we cut, every release. Um, we're also for NU5 going to, for the first time internally use testnet in the box, just spin up a testnet prior to the public testnet activation. Um, so yeah, so that, that's kind of the coverage there. Um, the next question, um, how much notice should the community get of a proposal to remove something from the protocol, like a shielded pool or some transparent functionality? Um, my, my quick response is, you know, I don't know the, like there, an exact number exists. I know there are stages that we would go through to deprecate a pool very much like we've done with Sprout, um, where, you know, it's, you can move funds out, but you can't move funds in anymore, right? You can move funds within Sprout or the out, but not in. So some period of like a pool deprecation strategy that would have different phases, I think would give folks and that would occur over multiple network upgrades, most likely. So we're talking, you know, years at this point. Yeah. Um, so. Agreed. Um, next question. With the recent funding of RT, which is the, the, the Tor implementation of Rust, how do you feel it would fit into the network upgrade pipeline? How would it get included slash prioritized? Um, Deirdre, do you want to answer that one? Yes. Um, one cool thing about RT and Tor is that it is currently not a part... The, the, the transport security or anonymity of the peer-to-peer -peer network protocol is currently not a part of our security model um, it, or the privacy model of Zcash. Adding Tor uh, as part of peer-to-peer -peer, uh, communication between Zcash nodes is a strictly like win. It's a strictly plus plus, it's strictly a value add um, so that we any of our nodes can deploy it basically whenever they want. So Z Zcash D, uh, Zebra D could deploy it when they want. Um, and it does not affect consensus. It does not, uh, it does not affect the spec. It does not, you know, um, and I don't even think it would require a zip. I think it would, it would probably be an inf informative zip about like, if you would like to connect uh, your full node over Tor, uh, like here's a way to do it that we think is very good for Zcash. Um, so I don't think it really, it would be part of, in terms of how it affects the network upgrade, I think it would basically inform what sort of resources that each of the protocol teams has uh, available to them. And then if the community is like, hey, we should do this consensus change as part of the next up network upgrade, and either the Zebra team or the Zcash D team says, oh, but we really want to deploy RT as part of the next one. So we have time in our schedule to really address like XYZ zips. Um, I think that might be where it would affect the, the no. Okay. Um, we've got about one minute yes. left. Quick question. When would conversations begin for NU6 according to the new NUP? Um, you know, arguably, as soon as we're we're comfortable, we've safely deployed on testnet and everything looks really good. Um, that would be, you know, our, our our definite focus up to that point would be in U five. So while we might talk about potential candidates for in U six, we we wouldn't do it in earnest until after that point. So, but I think we are right up on time. So um, thank you so much, Deirdre, for uh, for helping put this together, and thanks everyone at uh, uh, for helping put on a great uh, ZCon. And we'll uh, we'll see you on the Discord. I'm trying to answer all right. the questions in the Zoom. Thank you. Bye.